This is Tuesdays with Ted, that's me, and I'm sharing with you everything that I know in hopes that you can elevate your life. Hello everybody, is it working? You got it? All right. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Ted and we are here on Tuesday, it's 3 p.m. and we're doing Tuesdays with Ted. Today I'm gonna be talking about love and human connection. So I didn't do this last week and the reason was because uh, my wife and I went to, adjust my shirt, we went over to Florida and we went to visit a friend who, uh, who was, we had a celebration of life for her. So it was a very sad time because she passed away recently and she was 48. This would have been her 49th birthday. So it was a very sad time for us um, to be there, but we wanted to be there for her life partner and her kids who were all left behind. And so I didn't do this last week, but uh, in honor of Anna, our friend, I wanted this week to be uh, love and human connection because one of the things you realize, so in, 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 as I'm doing this Tuesdays with Ted, we're talking about different topics and, and my sort of you know, plan to live an amazing life has 10 steps essentially. One of them is time together or love and human connection. And uh, you know, sometimes you just, you, even if you're in a relationship, you just don't always feel great, right? You don't always feel connected or you can be in a room or in, in a stadium with 100,000 people and still just feel alone. So there's a lot of things to deal with when you're talking about being together and having that human co connection. In fact, there is a study called the Grant Study, which there's a TED Talk, and I'll put a link to it down below, or if somebody's out there and you know, you can put a link down there. But um, they, it's like the longest, the lo a longitudinal study about happiness, essentially. And, and one of the main things, in fact, I got the the guy's name now at Harvard who's kind of running the study now and the TED talk is called What Makes a Good Life by Robert uh, Waldinger I think is his name and essentially one of the surprise things that they realized was you know not necessarily being in love so you, you can be single but it's about human connection it's about having connection and time together and having that social connection and I know for me Years ago, I felt, and by the way, just for, so for you guys out there, if you ever want to have a discussion or you have stuff that you want to add for other people, people watch this um, later as well. So there's always tips and tricks. If you have a book that you read that helps, like for instance, The Five Languages of Love, that's a great book for those of us that are in relationships and we want to get more connected with our partner. So any anything like that, any questions you have for me or any tips that you want to leave, please let this be a two-way discussion. So anyway, I know for me, just to give you a little bit of backstory, back when I was in 11th grade, back in good old New York, I decided to kind of quit the sports I was doing. I quit football and I started to kind of go out on my own and I and I was kind of a loner in a way and I would come back I was listening to new wave music back when there was such a thing as new wave music and um, new order and all those guys and 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 I would come back with a trench coat but I was really kind of setting my own path and that's great in some ways but it's lonely in other ways too because I grew up on Long Island and I was traveling back and forth to New York City and you know it was lonely time two hours on the train back and forth but I was really kind of finding my own identity which is great but that was I was 15 or 14 or you know 16 years old whatever I was back then and that was kind of the beginning of me hey Drew uh, Drew I have your mat by the way <laughs> Drew was in class a few weeks ago I, I found which mat is yours I meant to tell you um, anyway so uh, it's important to find your own path to find your identity it's also important to understand that you also want to stay connected to people, right? Sorry about the overhead glow. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to change that for you Instagram folks. But um, anyway, it's important to stay connected and that's the one thing that they learned over studying people for 75 years. 
Hey, Jess. Uh, hey, April. Adam says hi. Hi, how's it going, Adam? Um, but one of the things that they learned from this study, essentially, is that human connection is one of the most important things you can possibly do. So a while ago, I, um, you know, in, in, in my life, and again, just to kind of give you a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a backstory, I would say in my 20s, I. Um, kind of bounced around from relationship to relationship and, and, and sort of had fun and wasn't even really thinking about getting married or, or, you know, I always wanted to get married and I always wanted to have kids. That was always, you know, something I wanted to do. But in my 20s, I wasn't even thinking about it. It wasn't until I turned 30, I was like, okay, now I should probably start to think about it. And in my 30s, I had, I think, four relationships. I, I, I don't know exactly, three or four. And they were longer relationships, a good, you know, year, year and a half, two years, which for me was a long time. And it wasn't until after I turned 40, I don't know, when did Lauren and I meet? Lauren and I met, and I was 40, I think. So we've been together since 2010. So I turned 40 in 2010, so it's been seven years. Um, but, um, and that, that connection, the reason I, I bring all that up is because the, the connection for me was really what was important. I know there's a lot of guys, and I know some of them very well, personally, who like date a ton of women and sit there on Tinder and just flip and flip and flip and flip and flip and just go through dates on a regular basis and don't eat, like looking at a person based on a picture and they're not even really giving the chance. Like there's no possible way, I believe, that you can have a deep, connection with somebody unless you're actually spending time with them and unless you're learning from them and, and you know and, and, and the little intricacies of a relationship and so there's there's a struggle that happens and you have to go through that struggle to get to the point where you feel the trust from another human being right now specifically we're talking about intimate relationships love relationships partnerships and in that way not friendships though friendships you hopefully there's a level of trust in the friendships as well um, and you you would hope that you have respect from your friends and if they would made a mistake you would hope that someone would be open enough and cordial enough and, and courageous enough to confront you with mistakes. And I know that I try to surround myself with people who are willing to tell me, hey man, you're crazy and you shouldn't be thinking those things or saying those things or doing those things and you need to check yourself first. And that's happened before in my life, believe me. So anyway, so, the, so, so it's, it, you know, having this connection among two people I think is a, is a big deal and having the social connection. I mean, there's the, like I said, the Grant study from Harvard, the, one, the longest study that has been happening for 75 years. I think it was in the 30s that they started uh, with some sophomores at Harvard. And every two years they go back to these people. First it was men, but then they started doing their wives and then they started doing their kids. And so it continues. And every 20, 30 years, there's a new person that will come in and head up the study because they want it to be the longest study about what kinds of things help people live happily for a longer period of time. And again, this is not about, this is not about longevity, it's just about, about your quality of life for as long as you can. So, um, so for me, after my finding my independence and then getting into my, in my 20s and then in my 30s, searching for a, a relationship that I thought was gonna work for me for the long term, finally finding it in my 40s, <laughs> and now working at it on a regular basis, is, has, been a great, um, has been a great journey, actually, for me. And something that I, that I will say has been, has been a, a sweet reward in my life and and you know I love my wife many of you know my wife if you haven't already met her she's fantastic and our little daughter Madison we love too but it, and uh, you know there we don't always get along and it's there there are times that we disagree on certain things there are times that she <laughs> <laughs> that she'll lovingly tell me uh, she didn't like the way I said something or whatever it is. And it's important to do that, you know. And, and of course, sometimes I get defensive and, and, and vice versa. But I think I'm probably the one that does worse than she, <laughs> than she does. She's probably way better than I am. 
Anyway, the point is, I think for us, the, the, the discussion and the open discussion in the relationship is really, really important and the open expression of emotions. So I know men don't cry, right? Or men aren't supposed to cry, but the bottom line is, I believe personally, if you don't, then you're holding all that stuff in because some things are sad, you know? And, and like I said, last week we didn't do this because we were in Florida celebrating our friend's life. And, you know, she had a, a life partner, a dear friend of ours, and they were together and it was kind of a surprise. Her, her passing was a, a surprise. And it's interesting because, you know, you, you, it made me realize that you want to take every moment uh, as a blessing, right? Every, every moment as a, as a gift, really. And those people around you, whether you know them or whether you're in a stadium of 60,000 people. I mean, look, if you, if you look, Jess, who is a friend from the UK, just if you think about Manchester and, and the bombing that just happened in Manchester, it's like you, those people went to go to, to an Ariana Grande concert and they lost their lives, 22 of them. And a lot of people, their lives will be changed forever because of that. And you weren't even thinking that something like that could possibly happen. And you know maybe some people were angry and, and they left in a in, with a, in, in a fight and anger and and never got to rekindle or never got to heal that wound right and that's you just you know I remember my mom passed away in 2005 and my dad passed away in 2007 and the first thought before I could even before I could even consciously form a thought my you know, instinctual thought that like jumped into my brain was, oh my gosh, I didn't tell her I love her. When I got the call from my brother telling me my mom passed away. And thankfully, immediately after that, I was like, well, wait a second. She knows you love her. She knows you love her. Because every conversation I've ever had with my mom has always ended, except maybe a couple of bigger fights, but has always ended with, mom, I gotta go. <laughs> I love you. Or, you know, she'd say, okay, I love you too. I'll talk to you later. And so, and that means something, right? And, and, and even though we would fight like cats and dogs, I mean, I think there's a thing between parents and, and, and children, there's just conflict. And, uh, and it was something that I tried to try to keep my mom healthy. She wasn't really healthy the last 10, 15 years of her life. And uh, it was it was harder for me because I thought, Mom, you got to do something. You got to eat right. You got to stop smoking. You got to exercise. And she wouldn't do any of it. And I would just we would just clash and clash and clash and clash. But I knew that she knew that I loved her, and that's why every conversation I ended with, "All right, Mom, I love you. I gotta go, and I got you know I gotta do it." So that the t when the day came it was October third, two thousand five. I'll never forget. I was walking into my friend's house. He was re renovating a house in Calabasas, actually. And it was after I taught a yoga class, and my brother called me crying, and, uh, and that's when I got the news. But and and going through the process of uh, understanding that I'm okay because I did everything I felt like I could do in my power in with the relationship with my mom and I think that's one of the most important things that I can share with you is make sure your side of the street is clean so to speak right they talk about that a lot in 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 12 steps is like you know you got to do your part and it's so important in relationships because the other person's responsibility or the other person's actions are not your responsibility what is your responsibility is your own actions and that's the biggest thing and and you can feel or at least i felt comfortable or okay or satisfied with the fact that when my mom passed, obviously none of us have any control over when that's going to happen for the most part, but when she did go, I felt satisfied. I, I didn't feel like I should have done this or I could have done that or I wish I would have done that and, and, and so I don't live with that regret, right? With my dad it was the same thing. He died suddenly um, two years after that, 18 months after that in 2007. I was on my way to Peru. He just had a heart. Uh, um, uh, he just had a heart uh, heart thing, and uh, he was having a stent put in. But he didn't take his medications. Long story. So, I think 
that it was really ignorance for him. He just, either he was so attached to my mom because they'd been together for 37 years that, uh, that he, just, he just decided not to take his medications from the doctor and then he, he just, you know, slowly, I mean, he just died because he, he, they were fixing one side of his heart and then the other side of his heart broke down and then he just, the whole, his whole heart collapsed. But again, I talked to him on a regular basis you know, and even though it was hard for my dad, because my dad came from that, that generation where you definitely didn't share your emotions. You definitely didn't, you know, my dad wouldn't, like, you could see him well up and then he'd like walk out of the room. He would basically just be like, I'm out of here, it's too emotional for me, I gotta go. But, you know, for me, it's, it's okay to have emotions. It's okay, I think that's part of the richness of life. Part of the richness of life is finding those experiences and finding those moments that make you feel great because there's gonna be a lot of experiences like the death of a loved one or like someone being pulled away from you from, you know, God or, or otherwise or breakup or, you know, the loss of something. Those moments are going to happen in life and you're going to be down in the dumps. And so, you know, the old way of thinking for me was always, I'll just deal with it, you know, I'll just, I'll just use my own, you know, I'll just kind of muscle through the whole thing. But when you allow yourself, when you allow yourself to uh, be vulnerable, and uh, uh, what's her name? I forget her name. She wrote a whole, the whole book and she has a TED Talk on vulnerable, Brene Brown. But vulnerability is such a huge asset and I think men specifically lose out on this whole entire world of being vulnerable and, 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 and sharing and, and having that human connection. It's so different when you, when you have a conversation with somebody and you feel there's a human connection and then you give someone a big hug and say, you know what, yeah, we just bonded. We, Brene Brown, that's right. Hey, what's going on there, Jackson? Um, <coughs> ben? Um, so it's, it's really beautiful to have that human connection, right? And, and whether you're single and you just have friends or colleagues or whatever, I mean, it's really important to understand. So we're, we're, we're approaching June. And June actually is uh, when Global Wellness Day happens. So I'll probably do a, a, a live show about Global Wellness Day. But this year, there's an organization, Global Wellness, and I think it might be globalwellness.org or something like that, international global wellness something. But the, the topic for this year is mental wellness. And the reason I bring that up is because social love and human connection is dependent on interaction. And a lot of times people that have mental illnesses at varying degrees have a tendency to isolate and have a tendency to be alone. So if you find yourself in that situation or you know somebody in that situation, just reach out to them. You know this, I, I go back to our friends in, in Florida that we visited last week and just talking to some of my friends, they said, you know, based on the fact that you went to go visit and celebrate Anna's life, I'm reaching out to a friend of mine that I haven't talked to in a long time. And it's as simple as that and it's easy because Guess what? We have social media now. We have these crazy computers that we that are basically like extensions on our arm. You can just send a note, say, "Hey, you know what? I haven't thought about you in a while. Just thinking about you. That's it." That was a practice I got into, and you know, with with Lauren actually. So I was, you know, I'd think all these great positive things and be like, "Oh wow, she's so cute," and "Oh, I love her when she does this or whatever." But I wouldn't tell her. And then I thought, wait a second, when I have that thought, why don't I just tell her? Why don't I just send a little text or send a little note? It doesn't need to be some big thing. I don't need to write a card. I could just say, hey, I'm just thinking about you. I love you. And, and that's it. And it's, it's important to keep that connection. That's, that's my, my belief. So before I was muscling through it, now I feel like there's a lot of um, play with my emotions. Sometimes I get angry, sometimes I get frustrated, sometimes I get vulnerable, and sometimes I cry. <laughs> and, and that's okay for me, right? It's, it's okay for me to, to do that. And, and because it's, it's, to me, it doesn't show any weakness. And I think that's the misconception. So I believe, you know, if I look around at, you know, they say you're, you're the average of your five closest friends, right? And, and I would say, if I look at my five closest friends, that, you know, every single one of them I've had deep connections with and deep conversations with on a fairly regular basis. And there's always, 
you know, hugs and in, hugs involved, and and it's like bromance central, <laughs> and it's important to have that. I think it's important to have that, right? And it's shown now by the Harvard study that social interaction is actually good and improves the quality of life. So I wrote down just seven things uh, that. And by the way, if you have any 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 questions or any comments, feel free to jot them down or type them in there. But I'll put a link to the TED Talk from the Harvard study. And then thanks to Ben, I will put a link to in the in the notes on Facebook. So those of you on Instagram, you'll have to go over and follow me on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash Teddy McDonald. But um, you'll find the link to the Brene Brown, or just Google it, Brene Brown TED Talk Vulnerability. And then the Harvard Grant study, which is called What Makes a Good Life? But my step-by-step -step framework that I kind of have used or that I that I use to stay connected is is number one is human contact. There's there's uh, seven things here that I'm going to list off to you. Thanks, Bob. Um, so seven things I'm going to list off. One is human contact. So give someone a hug. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like human contact touching somebody and you can talk to anybody who's ever been lonely who hasn't had the touch of a human being that's why people get massages because like oh it just feels good to have someone rubbing me right and someone hugging and rubbing me just hug someone right that's number one number two quality time so whether you're in a relationship or not it doesn't matter spend quality time with your friends spend quality time with your loved one spend quality time with your kids your parents your cousins your uncle family friends whomever spend quality time with a stranger but spend some time where you can just really truly connect with somebody huh? instead of and and I mean look we're all busy nowadays right everybody's busy doing all kinds of different things and everybody's got six different side hustles <laughs> and the idea is hopefully to block out all of that stuff and stay in the moment stay present when you're with a specific person or doing a specific thing. That's what mindfulness is all about. It's basically when you're doing the dishes, do the dishes. Don't do the dishes and think about the bills and think about this and think about that, in which case you break a glass and cut yourself and that's what happens, right? Most accidents happen from not actually paying attention. <laughs> so the idea is to pay attention. So spend that quality time listening to people as well. So whomever you're with, make sure that you're listening to what they're saying. Take in what they're saying before you respond. Don't have the actual response going in your head before the person even finishes <laughs> their sentence. So the num number three is buy flowers. So this one is really specifically more toward an intimate relationship. Unless you know a friend who wants some flowers, then you should do that too. But uh, just a nice little something. This is something to do any point that just bring a smile to someone's face. I think that that helps on a regular basis. And then <laughs> my number four is, is, is I kiss my wife on the forehead. So I come home and I kiss her on the forehead. So that's something that I do that I love that helps keep me connected, right? It's like immediately I give her a hug or I kiss her on the forehead. So if, uh, if you're in a, in, a, in a bromance with your dude friends, I don't recommend kissing them on the forehead. <laughs> but you never know. I don't know. Maybe Mark Briggs I'll kiss on the forehead next time I see him. Uh, <laughs> and plan a surprise. So plan a surprise is always a good thing. Do something out of the ordinary. That's another thing that happens. We get into these ruts of every day is the same thing over and over again, doing the same thing, doing the same thing. Just change, change the direction to work, change something, do something different. And every single town has, there's no way anyone can tell me they've done everything there possibly is to do in their little town or the city next, next to their town. Find something you haven't done forever. Like, I don't know, go to the museum. Or you know, go to a different museum if you always go to the same museum. Or go to the beach if you haven't been to the beach in a while. And if you're landlocked, then I don't know, go to some tourist attraction nearby. Do something different that you haven't done before. And then plan a vacation. That's a good thing too. Plan a vacation. A vacation is always nice because you force yourself to have some quality time with people or yourself. So if you're going to do it on your own, do it on your own. But otherwise, do it with some other people. Um, and then this love and human connection talk would not be 
complete if I didn't say make some love friends. <laughs> so those of you that are in a relationship or have the ability to do that, then that is a very healthy thing to do. And your sex life is super important. So funny, my aunt just joins, right? She, <laughs> as soon as I start talking about sex, Marianne, what is going on there? Aunt Maya, she's gonna kill me now, I can't believe it. Anyway, have a healthy, healthy, healthy sex life, an intimate life, as long as you possibly can. And otherwise, I'll go down that list one more time. Human contact, give somebody a hug, give them a kiss on the forehead, whatever it is that you do. Spend some quality time with your people, friends, family, uh, colleagues, co-workers, and buy someone flowers or a nice little gift. Keeping that human connection alive, give someone a smile. Uh, kiss them on the forehead, I mentioned that already. Plan a surprise, so if you're gonna do that, plan a little surprise for yourself. Plan a vacation so you can have extended amounts of time with somebody. And of course, finally, make a little love. All right, guys, that's all for me for today. I appreciate you watching, and I'll be back next week. And I forget the topic, actually, next week. But feel free, as always, to post any comments or give me any suggestions, and I'd be happy to uh, answer them all for you. Thanks so much. Namaste, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.